We have an oversold event. And as you know, at the university, we raise money. So for every oversold seat, we'll take a donation. <laughs> My name is Sister Kathleen Coglin, and I'm going to help move us through our program today. This is indeed an overwhelming and historical event. Historical for the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word. When three sisters, and you've heard this story before, but it's always worth repeating, came from Lyon, France, 18 to 24, to San Antonio, Texas, to care for the sick and in those in need. Almost 150 years later, as a major corporation in the city, the Congregation of the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word are still sponsoring Christus Santa Rosa, the Children's Hospital of San Antonio, the university, high schools, and continue to make a major difference with all of our lay associates. So we are on the, we have the support of many who went before us. And one of those people, one of our founders, Sister Madeline Cholet, today is the anniversary of her birth. So we're celebrating that momentous occasion. But there are sisters present here who help us continue our mission. And I'd like to recognize all of those who will help us go forward and impact the sick and the injured. Would you please stand, sisters? <clears throat> There are two seats up here, too, in case somebody wants to meander up. That way you don't have to pay. <laughs> <clears throat> this is also a historical day to open our School of Osteopathic Medicine. This is the 100th anniversary of the birth of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy. His last act as president was the day before he died when he came to San Antonio to dedicate the Brooks Air Force Medical School and Medicine program. That program was most successful in helping flight medicine as we prepared to go to the moon and many other historical events and equipment were developed here on the Brooks Base through the Air Force Medical School. So how exciting to think all these years later, medicine, a medicine medical school will continue to function in these premises. Thus, this is a historical designation. And I would encourage you as you visit the other buildings, to go to the front of the administration building. There is a plaque there with wording of what President Kennedy shared that day. This lectern was created by a member of the Brooks School of Medicine at the time. And this is the lectern that President Kennedy spoke from. So we cannot speakers bring any water up here or do anything. <laughs> Just your notes. So how wonderful that we could have this as part of our program. The Air Force donated the memorabilia, documents, and photos from that historic event to the witty. And the witty through Maurice McDermott has allowed us to have the lectern here with us today to celebrate the event. There are 
there, everybody in this room is a distinguished guest, but it's protocol to introduce some distinguished guests. So I'd like to name a few. And I know I'm going to miss some of you, so forgive me. First of all, I'd like to ask the Board of Trustees of the University, who guide us, work with administration, to help make our mission come alive for our students. Would the trustees please stand? I was going to suggest that when I call your name, you stand and you wave, you know, the royal wave, so we see where you're at. I'd like to uh, recognize former Congressman Henry Bonilla, a dear friend of ours, the wave, Henry. And he's usually not late, but Richard Perez just came in with the greater <laughs> San Antonio Chamber. We have representatives from our Christus Health Ministry from Dallas, Dr. John Gillian, one of our executive VPs, Dr. Rao, and what a testament to what we're doing Dr. Rao has his son in our first class. So we've got to do well. And the rest of the people I had, I haven't seen if they've shown up. So uh, I will move on to the program. It's customary for us to have a blessing and an invocation. But as we open new buildings, we like to bless those buildings, asking God to particularly bless all of the students who will be going through them and the faculty who will be imparting education to them. To join us in giving an invocation and then we'll bless the buildings is our new auxiliary bishop, although I'm sure he feels he's been in it longer than new, Archbishop Michael Boulette. The bishop will also bless two crosses, and they'll be presented to a student in our program, Brandon Davis, and then they will take them and hang them in the lobby of our administration buildings. Thank you very much. You might want I to will be this. careful with the holy water. I will try. I, I'm short too. I will. Uh... Oh, I think there's a uh, there is a lip here. It'll work. Um, welcome. And as uh, we have been told that this is historic. It is also a spiritual event, a deeply spiritual event for the people who will be a part of this and particularly for those who will receive the gifts that come from this institution and its leadership. Those who will receive the care, the institution's purpose to bring health and good graces to others. I wanted to take just a couple of minutes to talk about to one, to read a, a psalm that is used in the Old Testament to, to welcome some, someone new. And it's a, a song of the procession of the king. And it says very much what is on our hearts this day as we call God's presence into the midst of this assembly. And it says that which we are doing today. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. His we are. His people, the flock he tends. Enter the gates with thanksgiving, the courts with praise. 
Give thanks to God. Bless God's name, for God is good. The Lord, whose kindness endures forever. God's faithfulness to all generations. The Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word have represented that continuing grace and presence for, the, uh, for all of their presence in the city of San Antonio and beyond. And we give thanks to God for them and for that truth. The virtue that we are looking for today to, to concentrate on is the virtue of healing, the gift of healing. The scriptures have spoken to us profoundly about the nature of it. There is even an archangel in the Old Testament whose very name tells us God's desire. That angel is Raphael, Raphael, whose name signifies in Hebrew, God heals. And when he exercised that healing over Tobit to bring sight to his eyes, he said to, uh, the angel said to Tobit, and therefore he said to us, take courage. God has healing in store for you. So take courage, which means to open your heart. Courage comes from the word heart. It means to open our hearts. The, open our hearts, the students who will be here, open their hearts to the, to the learning, to the experience, to the practice, to the sense of touch that osteopathy has at its core, the sense of being able to observe and to be able to see the goodness of every human person and to be able to celebrate that as it looks into the hearts of those for using science and its goodness to be able to bring healing. It is a great gift. We are proud of all of those who have spent so many years, so much time, so much energy to bring this about. And so we pray a blessing upon all of those who have served to this point, all of those who will be served into the future, and particularly those who will be touched by the grace of healing that comes from this place. And so I'd ask the crosses to be brought forward, representing that blessing that will linger for this is not the blessing just of a moment, but it is a blessing that will linger. In the Old Testament, when it's God spoke, it was speaking of God's presence, it was a cloud that hung, hung over the, building, the meeting tent. Shekinah was the word. <laughs> the presence of God being known. May every sign of the cross upon the buildings of this place represent that blessing, that healing, that grace of God's presence to us. Let us pray. May God, the source of all wisdom, Christ the Lord, his word incarnate, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth be with us all this day. The all-knowing God who is Lord moves us in many ways to deepen that knowledge of God which is revealed completely when for our sake the word was made flesh, the incarnate word all disciplines, sciences, and teachings about the world and about human life that we pursue must have as their final purpose to bring to a knowledge of the truth and to the worship of the true God and to the healing of his people. Today we ask God's blessing on this center, more than on its buildings, on its people on its students, on its leaders, on its teachers, and those who will come for healing, learning and teaching what is true. We ask that those entrusted with the education of these young men and women in this institution may teach these students how to join the discoveries of human wisdom with the truth of the gospel so that they will be able to keep the true faith alive and to live up to it in their lives. We also ask the Lord that the students and teachers will find in each other the image of Christ, so that enriched with both human and divine learning, they will in turn be able and ready to enlighten and to assist others. And we make this our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God Father and Son and Holy Spirit come upon this institution and all therein through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much.
UIW School of Osteopathic Medicine is one of only two private medical schools in the state of Texas. And I love to remind the bishops it's the only Catholic medical school in the state. I'd like to call your attention to the program. If you turn to the back of it, there's a listing of the people who have helped us to make this dream a reality by contributing to our capital campaign. I'd like to call attention to a few of them. The Bear County Commissioner's Court, through the influence of Commissioner Calvert, gave us a most generous gift and our clinical skills lab will be named in their honor. In the middle of the program, you see the Lewis family. The members of the Lewis family, siblings and all with the parents, came together and gave us a most generous gift. And then going back up to the top is a new friend of ours, Dr. Uh, Eduardo Caballero and his wife Irene. Dr. Caballero has been practicing medicine, he's an allopathic physician, in Mercedes, Texas. And as he got to know our mission and what we were trying to do here related to supplying uh, physicians in the rural community, he wanted to be part of it. So his name is on one of our buildings outside. But to all these donors, we are most, most grateful. And I'd like if any of them are present, if you would stand and be recognized. We couldn't do it without our many friends and benefactors. Next on our program is Dr. Denise Doyle. She has been acting president during our transition. Denise is no stranger to us because she's a 30-year member of our UIW family. Some of the people call her Sister Denise. <laughs> Well, I'd like to begin this morning by giving a welcome to and a welcome from Dr. Tom Evans, who is an unseen guest here today, joining us from Helena, Montana by live stream. He sends his warm wishes to the faculty and administration of the medical school on this joyful occasion and looks forward to joining our community as president next month. The founding, sisters, the founding Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word lived by the principle, in all of our works, the glory should be for God, the service for others, and the trouble for ourselves. Today, as we reach this landmark in the development of the University of the Incarnate Word, I want to take a moment to recognize some of the UIW people and UIW partners whose work, and yes, trouble, have brought us to this day of celebration. I will have a chance to introduce our founding dean, Dr. Robin Madsen, in a moment. For now, I'd like to point out the patient behind the scenes research and exploration that our provost, Dr. Kathleen Light, has undertaken since the beginning of this project. She first led us through the labyrinth of osteopathic medical accreditation and education, and her hand has guided and supported all those involved from the inception of the School of Osteopathic Medicine. Edie Cogdale, our Associate Vice President for Finance, has tried as hard as she can to keep us on budget. 
Just as Sister Kathleen Coglin and her staff have worked tirelessly to secure external funding for the School of Osteopathic Medicine. Steve Hein, as usual, has done yeoman service overseeing the building of not one, but two major projects for the University of the Incarnate Word this year. As have Mike McChesney and Joe Bianco, our architects, who have turned this historic site into a modern school of osteopathic medicine. Special thanks also to Bill Huber, a longtime friend of the University of the Incarnate Word and project lead for George's construction on the medical school. I would also like to recognize and thank some of our community partners who have been working with us since the infancy of this idea. Leo Gomez, President and CEO of Brooks, thank you for never giving up on the idea of joining UIW to Brooks. Also, I'd like to thank Ann Stevens from Biomed SA, an old friend of ours, and who has been a supporter of many, for many years, of all, and a cheerleader for all our health care initiatives. Thank you for being here today, Anne. I also would like to recognize Dr. Adina Lawson, who is the president of St. Philip's College, a longtime friend of the university, and our partner on the east side of San Antonio. I'm delighted to see Mayor Nuremberg here today. Mayor, as you go about talking with groups and constituents of San Antonio, envisioning the future of our city, I hope you will keep in mind our School of Medicine as a jewel in the crown of the south side of our city and of Brooks. As a university, we are grateful for all the hands and hearts that have worked with us to get to this point, which is only the beginning of our journey towards becoming a vital contributor to the medical needs and health care outcomes of San Antonio and South Texas. We are proud of what we have accomplished. And while the work has been considerable, we believe that in time, we will re measure the rewards of this effort in tangible good directed towards the real needs of people. And in this, way we give glory to God. Thank you. And now, I forgot, and now I'm happy to introduce our new mayor, like our new auxiliary archbishop, our auxiliary bishop, he probably feels not so new, Mayor Ron Nuremberg. Well, good morning. Uh, it's a thrill to be here, uh, and congratulations to the University of Incarnate Word. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations to the first class of the school that will already be world class, in my opinion, uh, and many others. And congratulations to the city of San Antonio. Um, I'm so glad that this day began with pointing out what happened from this podium. And it is a, it's a pretty humble podium. Um, but if we remember, the president from this podium gave the speech about how America, in order to achieve its dreams, had to throw his cap over the wall to reach its dreams of space or exploration. And this day was created af after lots of work. And I want to acknowledge and honor that work because it was those dreams that led us to this moment. And here we are on the south side of San Antonio. And when people say the south will rise again, this is exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> so I want to congratulate our colleagues at the Incarnate Word, uh, University of Incarnate Word. Congratulations to you, Leo, and the board at Brooks. Congratulations to my colleague, Councilwoman Rebecca Villagran, who has been working tirelessly uh, with the leadership of this campus and this university to make this happen. This is a glorious day for the city of San Antonio. We know it's a growing city, and we know we have need. And what's exciting about the University of Incarnate Word and the school, the school of Osteopathic Medicine is that not only will it be 
fill in a medical triangle that has been created here in San Antonio that extends from our military medicine installations uh, to our world-renowned South Texas Medical Center uh, to BAMC and now here onto the south side to make San Antonio a world-class uh, environment for medicine and medical training. But this campus will be focused on training doctors and researchers in primary care, building upon a city of compassion to deliver and fill in gaps for underserved communities. Growing communities in our South Texas area and growing communities throughout the United States that will now depend and be benefited from the learning and the institutional knowledge that will come from these grounds here on the south side. And it's good for us here in San Antonio. It's good for our country. It's good for our world. It's also good uh, for San Antonio's economy. As you know, uh, roughly a third of the GDP in San Antonio can be contributed to our medical community. And here in the Incarnate Word uh, campus, we expect over a 10-year period about a $500 million economic impact. 50% increase from the already great economic impact of the University of Card, excuse me, University of Incarnate Word uh, community already. Billion and a half economic impact over 10 years from these school leaders and these students and these professionals. So congratulations to all of you. This is an extraordinary day, a historic day uh, for the city of San Antonio and for this entire community. I tip my cap to you and I say let's go over the wall and let's achieve our dreams together. Congratulations. I'd like to introduce Dr. Robin Phillips Madsen, who is the founding dean of the School of Osteopathic Medicine. And I think I could say, I know I was part of selecting her. I, we had many very educated expert candidates for the position of dean. But when we met Robin, we knew that she would be and has in fact become the heart of this school. And you know, the auxiliary bishop said the heart is the word courage. And she has heart and courage, and she is sharing that with her faculty. And we are so glad to honor you this morning. Robin. Thank you for those kind words, Dr. Doyle. Well, I've heard that when God is going to do something wonderful, God begins with a difficulty. <laughs> when God is going to do something very wonderful, God begins with an impossibility. <laughs> the eagle has landed 48 years ago today. Those words were spoken when the astronauts of Apollo 11 landed on the moon for the very first time. Much of the research and preparation to get there was done on this very campus. For many people, the establishment of the UIW School of Osteopathic Medicine seemed just as great an impossibility. And I stand before you today to say that God is doing something very wonderful here. It's humbling to work with the leadership of UIW who allowed us great freedom to create an osteopathic medical school founded on the four principles of educating physicians for the future and focusing on primary care and the underserved in this region. I would like to give a special welcome to our visitors today who have worked at the former Air U.S. Air Force School of Aerospace Medicine housed in these very buildings. Not only have these buildings been transformed, but a unique transformational socially accountable curriculum has been created with the full expectation that the health of the citizens and communities we serve will be impacted positively. UIWSOM actively seeks out partners because we believe that collaboration with the community is critical to meet our mission. We cannot do this alone. Because medical education is a continuum of undergraduate, graduate, and continuing medical education, UIWSOM is actively developing residency programs 
I'm proud to announce that UIW SOM's GME consortium called the Texas Institute of Gradu Je Graduate Medical Education and Research, that's a mouthful, we call it TIGMER, Tigmer just welcomed the inaugural residents in an innovative family medicine program earlier this month before we even had students. This program incorporates community Yes, thank you. This program incorporates community-based training in primary care for underserved populations with an emphasis on mental and behavioral health and is supported by state and private grants in partnership with CommuniCare Health Centers and the Center for Healthcare Services. And this is only the beginning. To recognize the hundreds of people involved in an adventure of this magnitude is impossible. To every construction, janitorial, facilities, landscaping worker, planner, attorney, accountant, UIW and Brooks employee, UIW board and development member, consultant, engineer, architect, designer, faculty, administrator, staff, cook, food server, focus group participant, which included many of the sisters, applicant interviewer, student and community volunteer, philanthropist, artist, every state, civic, and city leader, community physician, health system, hospital and clinic employee, member of the Texas Osteopathic Medical Association, the Bear County Medical Society and Texas Medical Association, accreditation commission employee, every dean and staff of many other medical schools who so generously shared advice and wisdom, every supportive family member, including my husband in particular, and every sister of charity of the incarnate word, past and present, Thank you for your talent, your treasure, your prayers, encouragement, and support. You, you will forever be an integral part of this priceless community resource. I greatly appreciate the UIW SOM team. I appreciate the provost, without whom I could not have done this. I appreciate the team that has, who, in, who have been stirred in their souls by the vision of this historic place and purpose to have come and embraced this endeavor. We in every facet of UIW have been stretched by the demands of building an excellent experiential learning environment. Thank you for your hard work, brilliant creativity, flexibility, and laughter. We vow to be good stewards of the profession of osteopathic medicine, this hallowed and historic campus, the legacy and values of UIW, <clears throat> and most importantly, the charism of the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word by extending the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. This is only the beginning. San Antonio, our eagle, has landed, and I want to thank each and every one of you for your support in this worthy work which will reach far into the future, beyond ourselves, glorifying God, and significantly impacting our wonderful community and world. Thank you. We all need a fearless leader, and how blessed we are to have many. One of them is the chair of our board, Charlie Lutz. He's in his second nine-year term. We sort of, <laughs> when, we, when we get you, we got you. <laughs> He's also continuing in a got you role as chair of the board gives untold time, talent, and service to work with us in so many ways. So I'm proud to introduce our board chair and my friend, Charlie. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for letting me be here representing the Board of Trustees of the University this morning. It's, it's a distinct privilege. Um, from the very beginning of this idea of a school of osteopathic medicine, the Board of Trustees has approved and remained committed to the process every step of the way. They have guided, supported, and advocated on behalf of this program. 
as I see my fellow trustees here, th those who have advocated at Commissioner's Court, Gary Joris is here, who's been so instrumental to that. Charlie Amato, who's advocated at the state level, as have Gary Henry and Veronica Edwards. The fundraising for this initiative has been <laughs> extraordinary. Jack Lewis and Mike Bells and Scott Beckendorf have been key components or uh, drivers of that process, and, and to date it's been quite successful. So on behalf of the board, I thank all of you uh, for getting us to this point. It was about five years ago, right now, when Lou first raised the issue of um, a medical school. And after we got over our, I guess, shock that then turned to skepticism, <laughs> it turned to despair and worry, <laughs> uh, we got on board. And you can imagine, therefore, what a distinct privilege it is for me this morning to introduce to you that individual whose vision for a school of osteopathic medicine at uh, the University of the Incarnate Word has now become reality. President Emeritus of the University, Dr. Lou Agnese. <clears throat> I have to remind Charlie, it was just one of many crazy ideas. <laughs> well, uh, this morning is a very important morning for the city of San Antonio and for Bear County because it's more than just the opening of a medical school. This morning is the birth of the South Texas Medical Center at Brooks. It's a very important reality because in the future, and I'd say within most folks here's lifespan, when someone comes to San Antonio and they ask, um, where is the medical center? The next question would be, which one? <laughs> and that's so very important. That's so very important in the competitiveness of our state. Because as you know, recently a medical school was opened in Austin. Uh, to compete uh, in the state of Texas for the talent, and then one in the Valley. But now San Antonio has two medical schools, very different in philosophy and design. The University of the Incarnate Word is named University of the Incarnate Word, not Incarnate Word University, because it is dedicated to the spiritual development of the young people that come here, their faith development. And it's immaterial whether they come as Catholics or Baptist or Methodist or Muslims or Jews or whatever faith. But it's very important that they grow in their faith through the experience of the Incarnate Word here. And that's what makes the University of the Incarnate Word School of Osteopathic Medicine different than any other in Texas or in the country. I don't know if you realize, but there are only six Catholic medical schools in the country. Four were founded before I was born, and then two recently, this being the most recent. Um, the Archbishop, I know, was well aware of the fact that the only school of, the only Catholic school of pharmacy in Texas, or optometry, or physical therapy, uh, and now medicine, is at the University of the Incarnate Word. And that's truly a very unique part of what we're all about. When you think of Incarnate Word, I always use two words, and I think they're very appropriate for this morning. The first word is aspiration. And what we try to do in South Texas, and what we've done so very well, is bring aspiration into the young people's minds who would never have thought of, been, of being a pharmacist, or a nurse, or a physical therapist, or doctor, or optometrist, if it was not for Incarnate Word especially now located at Brooks on the south side. Aspiration. And then a very important word that we've helped implement in San Antonio, and that's called choices. Our young people that come to Incarnate Word as freshmen have choices of where they can aspire to and role models to lead them to where they can aspire to. So today is very important, very important, because as John F. Kennedy said when he was here,
We're looking to the moon. Well, for many on the south side, Broadway was the moon. Okay? And we've changed that. Incarnate Word has changed that. And we'll continue to do here at Brooks with the medical school. Very important day. The development, the opening of a medical school founded in the principles of the Incarnate Word on the south side to give aspiration and choices to the young people of the state of Texas in an area of primary care which is so underserved in Texas. Very important. Fulfilling a niche, a need, like we often do. Charlie said five years ago, we, oh, I presented to the board the idea of a medical school. And uh, they uh, kind of chuckled, uh, but, uh, but gave support to the idea. The idea really came when we opened our third professional school, the first being the School of Nursing, which was the first accredited nursing program at the bachelor's level west of the Mississippi when it was founded, the second being the School of Pharmacy, and the third being the School of Optometry. When you think of optometry, optometry is a mini medical school, it has all the pieces of a medical school. That was on my 25th anniversary as president, and uh, it was probably my worst year as president in trying to get that optometry school opened. But we did, and we were successful, and we got it accredited, and now it's an outstanding school. But all the pieces were there. And when we opened that optometry school, I knew that a medical school was in our future. It just was a matter of time and money. Now, as Kathleen has reminded you, and if Tom Evans was here this morning, I know he's here in spirit and watching us, Tom would remind you, as you walk through the buildings and the beautiful offices that you'll see in labs and wonderful facilities, they're not named. So opportunities and choices <laughs> exist. It is time for philanthropy in San Antonio to catch up to UIW, okay? Um, when I first talked to friends of ours who share our ministry at Christus and told them that we were thinking of a medical school, my friends are there, it wasn't those that I spoke to then, one of which was, and they said, uh, never happen. You cannot do that. That is not in the future of Incarnate Word. Well, I guess they were wrong. <laughs> the 150 plus students that will arrive here and have their white coat ceremony on July 31st, I believe, uh, will be a testament to that. The buildings and the facilities are state of the art. But more importantly, Robin has put together a faculty, which is the heart of any institution, that believes in the mission of the congregation and the mission of the university to inspire and give young people the talents that they have and to grow those talents as they graduate from this university. So, in closing, I strongly encourage you, as you walk around this campus, as you meet with friends and uh, uh, associates in the community, tell them that this jewel still needs millions and millions of dollars of support. Um, we're open, we're functioning, and we've done what UT Austin's medical school and, and the Valley Medical School could never do without taxpayer money. With the money and the support of people like you, of the people that have supported our ministry for the 100 plus years of its development, and that will continue to support the development in the future. Because your dollars are multiplied in the eyes and the benefit of the young people that come to school here. So praise be the incarnate word today and forever and ever. Thank you very much.
always appreciate Lou's help to do my job. <laughs> We've talked about the faculty. Could I ask all the members of the faculty of the School of Medicine to please stand? I know there is more on the payroll than those few. They're in the open flow. So they're being very generous in giving up their seat in here. But they're the ones who are going to make this dream happen. One of the fun things of starting a new project is the new friends you make and the people you meet. And the next two individuals you'll hear from are those people. Commissioner Calvert, representing the Bear County Commissioner's Court, has indeed become a friend and a friend to the sisters, even having us come to a commission meeting to give an invocation and tell about ourselves. Uh, we usually don't like to do that, but um, we'll sell a product. So vocations, our vocation directors here. Anyway, uh, Tommy Calvert has become a new dear friend, and we're grateful for his influence with the commissioner's court to get us a million five to name our clinical skills lab, and that lab will be where our students give direct patient care and learn their skills. Commissioner Calvert. On behalf of the great state of Texas, it's my honor to congratulate the University of the Incarnate Word Medical School for being recognized under Texas law, authored by State Representative Justin Rodriguez and State Senator Carlos Uresi, and signed by Governor Greg Abbott as an officially recognized medical school in the state of Texas. And on behalf of the Bear County Commissioner's Court, it is one of the great honors of my life to congratulate the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word, the Board of Trustees, the inaugural medical school faculty, and last but not least, every single member of the inaugural medical school class for making this historic day happen. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Today is one of the very rare days that my father and mother join me at a political speech and my dad always tells me, be good, be brief, and be gone. <laughs> so I'm going to take his advice. The University of the Incarnate Word's main campus and this campus sit in my precinct, Precinct 4. And I was driving home from the courthouse on Broadway Monday and I realized that I had passed the University of the Incarnate Word, the place that gave my mother her doctorate degree. Yes, President Agnesi, we're paying a little bit of debt service on the <laughs> medical school too. Yeah. I passed that sign 5,000 times without taking stock of what the name, the University of the Incarnate Word means. The name of the university is about the Word of God being invested and manifested in us in our human journey through life. And in order to understand how this medical school got here, on the southeast side, in Brook City Base, Texas, Leo, thank you, we ought to give thanks to God that this order of sisters has once again lived out God's desire that people prosper through this medical school and through the Board of Trustees, the donors, the faculty, staff, and students who each are playing a role in manifesting our community's potential. 
When I was driving down Broadway Monday, thinking about what I might say today, a voice in my head talk, told me to talk about the book and the story of Nehemiah. Nehemiah had seen the crumbling of the community's wall, the crumbling of the city, and felt it was important to fix it for the future prosperity of his people. In the same way that Nehemiah sought to rebuild where things had been run down, so too did the sisters and this university leadership and Leo seek to rebuild in a part of town that has up until recently been neglected. They could have built this medical, medical school anywhere. They could have built it in the rim, down the street, from the medical center today. But we are grateful that God put in your hearts the vision to come to the southeast side, where we are medically underserved. Educationally, things have been crumbling, where the site of the university steeple could give the most hope and opportunity. In the story of Nehemiah, his strong and humble leadership was able to enlist so many people to do their part to build the wall, the sections to the city. But he would face major external threats and even some internal turmoil along the way. This medical school faced some of those same obstacles. There were those that said, you won't get certified by the Texas legislature this session. Some people said you didn't work with some communities, so they didn't want to support you, none of which was true. Some said you wouldn't be able to raise the funds. They underestimated my main man, Mr. President. <laughs> Personality politics tried to get in the way. Well, Commissioner Calvert wants this thing, so I'm going to throw up a hurdle. President Agnese didn't thank me the right way seven years ago, so I'm not going to give. There aren't enough internships in this town for the residents. Like Nehemiah, things were put there to discourage you, to distract you, to harm you. And I thought to myself, wow, no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> I've got a titanium spine, but even I got worried that, that this wouldn't come to fruition. But I want you to know, Sister Kathleen, I now know why you were so steady, why you rarely panicked, why you rarely flinched when I was flustered. You knew that who was for you was greater than who was against you. Your opposition didn't know that you had the Nehemiah favor of God, that no weapon formed against you would prosper. I don't mean to be preachy, but I've witnessed this battle. I've witnessed this time and again over the sev last several years with this medical school. So now to the students and faculty, onward and upward, on the foundation of which the University of the Incarnate Medical School was built. On to the work of transforming individuals and families by the careers in medicine. On to the work of reaching out to the neglected rural lands and underserved, uninsured inner cities. On to the work of advancement in our fight against cancer. We wish you, the students and faculty, Godspeed in your work on mental health. We are grateful for the healing that will spread from Brook City-based South East San Antonio, Texas, to every corner of the world in service to our fellow man. And we thank you in advance for the new higher income housing that will be in the southeast side. Restaurants, stores we haven't had will come because good paying doctors and nurses will build their homes not far from here on the southeast side. Thanks for relieving some north side traffic too, by the way. <laughs> amen, you get an amen for that, right? $10 billion in economic impact over the next 10 years is just the tip of the iceberg. 
What these students will be prepared for are all of the challenges we haven't even thought of in the field of medicine as we head to a world with 10 billion people and more. So as I go to my seat, I want all those who labored to construct, to fund, and develop this medical school to remember that you didn't have to be in the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word. You didn't have to be a bishop or a minister. You can play your part as a janitor, as a medical student, as a donor. And when things get hectic in the hospital room, in the emergency room, when things get busy in your doctor's office, when people try to divide and tear society apart, remember this Nehemiah story that manifests itself at this school. Remember what we can do when we work together to build each other up for the common good and give thanks, give God thanks and praise for the things God has done. Thank you. Uh, just an announcement. The shuttle is due to leave now, but it will wait for you and leave 15 minutes after the service, uh, the program closes. Our other new friend, who's been with us for years serving the South Side, she's in her third term on the city council, is Councilwoman Rebecca Viragran. She has worked with us on our many projects, just down the road, we have our School of Golf Management uh, in conjunction with Republic Golf Course. Rebecca loves all this because it's all in her district. So we work well together, and she will continue to help us here on the south side. Rebecca. I am going to use this. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Um, it is an honor to be here. I am Rebecca Villagran, the councilwoman for District 3. I've been serving for four years now on the city council. And I um, want to say, first of all, that I agree with many of the things that have been said already. And District 3 does represent the past, the present, and the future of San Antonio. And this is just another example of that. And as I'm here, um, I want to first and foremost, I, I do want to, you know, I feel like I am in church right now from the start and then from your uh, speech, Commissioner, and just say that this is the day that the Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it. And that here, I want to also talk to our, um, the sisters, and I want to thank you for your legacy. Thank you, because it took these strong, brave women who left another country to come to a foreign land to come and say yes and take risks and to, um, to take risk and to do the Lord's work. And that work continues through all of you. And that legacy is going to continue because of this medical school. And I think of the legacy that this is a part here, the legacy of this medical school, the legacy of this campus, the legacy of this former medical school now being revitalized and reutilized for the future of the entire city of San Antonio and the region of South Texas. I also think of then the legacy when we just were here at this podium, the legacy of our former president and what that president, what he offered a country of hope, of belief, of going and thinking further. So that's why I want to thank the sisters. I want to thank Dr. Agnesi for believing and saying yes. And I want to thank Leo for continuing to be that, um, we have a word in Spanish, Necio, who keeps uh, being there and is just wants to be there and let him know let, that we had the best offer here in the south side of San Antonio. But not that we had the best offer, but that we 
deserved it, and we are worth a state-of-the-art, world-class medical school here in the south side of San Antonio. I do, uh, for the, for the uh, students, which Brandon is representing here, um, just thank you for saying yes here to UIW-SOM. Thank you for our dean and all of the faculty for saying yes as well. It was an honor to be a part of the team that championed this initiative. It was an honor to be a part of some of the candidate interviews too. And even during those candidate interviews, I want to say we have world-class students who are going to be here. And please make no mistake, this is transformational for the entire city of San Antonio. This is a game changer for this area and the programs with the state grants that you've been afforded, that we've, we've gotten, that is going to be a paradigm shift and break cycles in healthcare that we had not had yet in the South Side. But this has happened because of this medical school. So with that, I want to thank you. Thank you for your service, and this is just the beginning, and I know the best is yet to come. Thank you. It's my pleasure then to introduce Leo Gomez, who is the president of Brooks, Brooks uh, a longtime servant of San Antonio and a friend of the University of the Incarnate Word. Please welcome Leo Gomez. I'm going to stand on this. <laughs> This is President Kennedy's lectern, after all. I want to be seen at it. Yeah. The last time I stood in this auditorium, it looked a little different, Gary Joris. Uh, to you and your team, all your subs, and all the folks that uh, worked the hammers and worked everything that it took to make it happen, not only in this building, but from throughout, and really give this part of our campus life for years to come. Thank you to the Joris team. I mean, um, I just realized as I stepped up here that I have a new name. I thought it was Mr. Minjares, but now it's Necio Minjares. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman. My wife will appreciate that, I know. Uh, in all seriousness, uh, the, much has been said that I could say here today, and, and the real role that I need to play here is to offer our welcome on behalf of Brooks. So on behalf of the Board of Directors of Brooks, its staff, its tenants, its property owners, its residents, and its champions, we thank and welcome the UIW family to Brooks, San Antonio, Texas. Welcome. <laughs> Chairman Charlie, to you and the trustees, to the sisters, to the faculty, to the students, to the staff of UIW, we truly thank you for believing for believing in Brooks and this side of town to be the home of what's going to open so many doors well into the future and benefit not just all of San Antonio, but all of South Texas, making an incredible difference. That's what we're here for, you all. We're not here to just build another building, build another operation, another apartment community. We are transforming a community doing it in a way that makes San Antonio mayor even more powerful and wonderful than it's ever been. Because when all of San Antonio is doing well, San Antonio is doing well. Let me tell you, uh, a core value of us, or Brooks, at the very top is an understanding that what we do is indeed bigger than us. In everything we do, we look for partners who believe in that and have that kind of characteristic. And let me tell you, there's no better partner in it than the leadership and the family of the University of the Incarnate Word. And Lou, a few conversations on the phone, turn to a few conversations on a patio here or there, and here we are. Congratulations to your vision, sir. Okay. Denise? You then went about the day-to-day -day work to make it happen. And uh, what a pleasure it's been to work with you and the folks at the university, then Connor Ward Dean. Oh my God, I look forward to the future. 
I look forward to that student body, your faculty, and the administration, and everything Brooks is going to do with you to partner to make everything come to realization. Let me tell you, if anybody thinks today is the start of a medical school, like Lou said, like the mayor said, like the commissioner said, like Rebecca said, councilwoman said, uh, you ain't seen nothing yet, really. Let me tell you, an incredible hospital in Mission Trails Baptist Hospital, a good partner with the University of the Incarnate Word that I know is going to, to be realized. Uh, I think a next step is all of us working together to bring a quality health professions magnet school for the young students in this part of town to Brooks, complementing this medical school in the hospital. And trust me, there are folks working on that. The vision out here to transform what once was an asset for 100 years for the United States of America as a military base into what will be a vibrant mixed-use community a part of the San Antonio Tomorrow Plan that will transform San Antonio as we focus and invest in the regional growth centers that our city's leadership is working towards. And doing it from this corner of San Antonio, helping show the model by which to do it in other parts of town is really what we're all doing here today. So it is bigger than us. And as wonderful as the medical school of osteopathic medicine is, I know you all agree with me that it is bigger than us. And we're making a difference out here. And I thank you all. I thank everybody here for supporting them and what they're doing. It's a fantastic day. Councilwoman, indeed, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, everybody. We're almost at the end of our program, and to represent the sisters with some closing remarks is the boss of the sisters. <laughs> How blessed she is to have all these wonderful women to be responsible for. That's a joke. <laughs> Sister Terry Maya, our congregational coordinator. I will take the step too. Well, praise be the incarnate word. I just realized I'm the last thing between the program and the ribbon, but aren't you grateful it's not outside? <laughs> On behalf of the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word, founders and sponsors of the university, we are delighted and grateful that UIW now has a school of osteopathic medicine. Incarnate Word Sisters in San Antonio have always been committed to the health of this community because we believe that extending the healing ministry of Jesus Christ is fundamental to our mission. We all pray that the faculty and students that gather here will be the healing hands of Jesus to all those they encounter well into the future. Truth be told, and I must confess this morning, I see it and I cannot believe it. Really, we all stand here today filled with gratitude for what is possible when people with faith and conviction dream together. I was one of those people that didn't believe Lou. I just told him. So we are very grateful for the visionary leadership of Dr. Lou Agnesi. Please give him a hand. He challenged us to do this, and he made us believe with him. We are also very grateful to the team led by Dr. Robin Matson and Dr. Kathy Light, who cleared every hurdle from curriculum to accreditation to get us here. We are grateful for the people of the city government in San Antonio who believe with us and challenge us to believe, all the way from El Necio to the mayor. 
We are especially grateful to the generous benefactors that have contributed time and treasure. And of course, we are grateful for the benefactors that have, are yet to come. We are grateful to the faculty and staff who have dared to believe that this is possible and are here with us today. I had the blessing to join them on Tuesday, and believe me, we have an incredible group of men and women who will lead this school. And finally, I am grateful to the students that have already enrolled and are ready to come, represented here by one of them. Thank you for your trust in the University of the Incarnate Word and in the mission of the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word. To all of you, the dream has come true. Thank you. So we began with prayer, and now I invite all of us to finish this program by bowing our heads and praying for God's blessing. I will ask you to repeat after each invocation, help us extend your healing ministry. Jesus incarnate word, bless the school of medicine so that it can be a sacred space for learning to extend your healing ministry. All help us extend your healing ministry. Bless the faculty and administration so they may realize their call to be the healing hands of Jesus and help extend your mission today. Help us extend your healing ministry. Bless all our students so they may become the kind of healthcare providers that will be your hands into the future. Help us extend your healing ministry. Bless all our benefactors present and future, so their partnership with this mission can continue to extend your mission in San Antonio and beyond. Help us to extend your healing ministry. And bless our city of San Antonio with men and women committed to the health and well-being of our community. Help us extend your healing ministry. And may we all, all be blessed in Jesus the Incarnate Word, forever, amen. We would now like to have a symbolic cutting of the ribbon. And assisting us in that is our mayor, Dr. Doyle, Dr. Matson, our founding dean, Mr. Jack Lewis, representing our benefactors, and campaign committee, Dr. Caballero, Commissioner Calvert, and Sister Terry. And while they're gathering, I want to encourage you when you take the tour, Rebecca too, I'm sorry, I missed, um, to take the tour and go to our administration building. There's a beautiful painting in there that was commissioned by Bonnie and John Pivato to incorporate the dream. It's called Soaring and Serving that we hope will be the values that we portray here and accomplish with our students. And Lucy Pivato, a local artist. Is Lucy in the room? I know she's coming. She's probably outside. Um, put this together to interpret that dream, and it's just beautiful. And then refreshments are outside after the ceremony. So if everybody has their scissors, don't cut yet. <laughs> if you get ready, we will do this on the count of three. All of you join with me. One, two, three. Thank you for coming and celebrating this new beginning. God bless each of you.